Well, hello there. Today we're going to talk about rust treatment. Um, let me start out with telling you what we're up to. This is a 1962 Mercury Comet. It's kind of a rare creature. It's a version of the Falcon 62, and then in 64 the Mustang came along, which is built on this. It's a unibody frame, so but it's real tough to get parts for. I can't just buy quarter panels and everything. Plus, I'm a tight wad. And uh, so I'm going to show you a real cheap way to do some uh, rust repair here that's going to it's going to look a little flaky and uh, you're going to scratch your head and wonder uh, if I'm crazy or what but um, it'll work, it'll get this thing back on the road you know I paid a thousand bucks for this thing, I could sink ten thousand into it and do it completely right and then I could it would be worth four thousand so in other words, you're doing this for, it's a labor of love, it's not um, there's no money in it, that's for sure so but you can tell it's a very sexy, very cool car and uh, what's the point in driving around in something like a BMW or Mercedes or something, you know, with some uh, guy wearing $150 sunglasses? I can pull up in this thing next to that guy, and his wife's going to look at you and go, Oh, man, now that is a sexy car. Why can't I be with that guy? So that's the point of this whole thing. End up with a very cool car at a very cool price. So pay 1000 bucks for it, sink 1500 2000 bucks into it. You have a pretty good car. Now, this repair might not last more than 10 or 15 years, I'm not really sure, so I have to wait and see, but it's not going to be out in the rain anymore, it'll always be garaged, um, but rust never sleeps, even in the protective custody of your garage, rust never sleeps, but what you can do is try to make it take a nap, and that's what we're going to do here. So um, real quickly, let me, a couple of quick safety things, you've got to have some really decent goggles, a variety of these things here, are actually prescription or goggles. When you're grinding and stuff, you got to have some of these. You can't be breathing this crap in because you'll die at a young age. You can have a couple different, for whatever you're working, real heavy stuff, this will work, but real fine stuff that's atomized, you got to have this. Um, so you got to have a good variety of gloves when you're doing all this grinding are really important. You want to protect your upper arms. You can see what happens when you uh, touch your finger up against a wire wheel or something. But Anyway, here's a spot similar to the other side there. I tapped with the hammer, knocked out all the rust. I came up with a grinder. I'm going to cut a bunch of metal out. Then I laid some short strand glass in here, metal back in. It looks like crap right now, but I'm getting ready to pull this with some Bondo and it'll, it'll come out looking nice. What I wanted to show you here was this real ugly part right here above the rim of the, the fender well. Um, notice that I didn't get very carried away cutting out here. The reason being is I need this structural integrity. I got to have a surface. To build from so I did the absolute minimum I'm drilling and grinding and uh, then when I got rid of all the, the heavy rust there I uh, came in here with a rotary file and grinders and cleaned off until I couldn't see any more rusty surface here cleaned that all up and then um, cleaned it up physically as best I can on the side there and then uh, sprayed it hosed it down with rust converter and then, to arrest the rust further up in there. There's the stuff um, from ESO, it's a zinc chromate primer. And what you do is you sp it has a, a little nozzle that finally atomizes the um, zinc chromate and uh, it has four little jets in there. So what you do is you stick it up in all these crevices, you spray and then you pull it. So I've got all this, this whole area up in here is all as best as I can, it's been treated to prevent rust, so I'll get, I'll get plenty of years out of this. It'll look good. I'm just not going to win any shows, but that's okay. Um, ideally, I would weld a panel in there, but where do I find one? You know, maybe there's some in Southern California. I don't know, but someday, if I were to do that, I could easily get rid of these repairs and cut in, weld in a great big conch like this if I could find one, um, or grind out my repairs or whatever. You can see a slot up under here between the gas tank and the fender where I cut out a big hunk of metal that was all rusty, dressed it all up, put glass in here. Behind the glass is a layer of matte glass and beyond the matte glass is another layer of just cloth glass. So this is actually stronger than the way it was manufactured. It's going to be extremely tough. The reason I want it so tough is it has to bear all this load. It's a unibody design. so. There's more stress on these panels than in a lot of uh, regular frame designs. So, anyway, we're on the way here. All right. So, 
ready to uh, cut this excess foam off here. Um, put this metal uh, mesh up in there, backed it up with this foam, which shoved the metal up against there. The metal will give the uh, Bondo something to adhere to. So what I gotta do now is uh, get rid of this foam. This cake, just saw it off. Literally, you can take a, uh, a razor, cut it, you know, whatever. Ah. But these things seem to do the trick pretty well, so that's the way to go. So you can see my, my mesh in there is now going to give me something to uh, for the bondo to go a little bit there. So um, if you look up here, you can see the I just did a quick pull of uh, regular bondo there. And uh, rubbed it out a little bit with uh, 40 and then 80 and then followed up with a little bit of 200 and now I'll start to uh, hand feather it in a little bit more there and then I'll do one more pull with, uh, with glaze putty and I'll be good to go. Alright, more to follow on this. I'll fill that all in and it'll look honky dory. Yeah, I should have mentioned too, as far as the uh, rust and the rust. You get one of these uh, little sandblasters for 30 40 bucks from Harbor Freight or Northern Tool or whatever. Just hook it up and you can use playground sand in there or, or better off. Um, there's there's some media that you can buy that's even better. But, um, so you just get up in these little notches like that. Give that a quick blast and we'll remove any more rust laying around. Now. The other thing I should have mentioned too is if your car um, maybe have some moisture inside a place like this, can hit it with one of these guys a flame torch warm it up before you uh, start to put your rust inhibitor on there that way it'll evaporate any residual moisture might be hanging around I didn't do it in this case because this thing's been sitting inside the garage here for uh, a little over a year so. come over here slap it on thusly So we've already got the uh, short strand um, glass here in there already. it. So I'm on the downhill stretch here of uh, blocking this out and finishing up this repair here. I um, wanted to show you just a couple of real quick things about blocking here. Uh, there's all kinds of variety of tools you need but you definitely need a good quality um, blocking tool like this DuraBlock thing. It's pretty expensive uh, but it's well worth it. But there's a lot of things you can improvise with. For some things you can use like styrofoam, very kind of foam like this. Um, you can buy these little pads for, for very fine-tuned stuff. This is, I don't know, 600, 800 or so. And uh, you can even use a hunk of uh, pipe insulator tubing wrap it around there. Just to, trying to avoid a pressure spot like in this curb right here. That would be a good application for that right in here. So anyway, right now I just want to block a little bit here. So I'm doing pretty aggressive with about 150 on this last little spot here. Um, glaze putty. Um, if it were a regular putty, I'd be going even a little more aggressive than that for the initial pull. But, uh, all the techniques are doing this blocking, though. You don't you don't want to listen to me. Who you want to listen to is this guy right here, Kevin Tetz, and uh, you can find him on um, YouTube and on Eastwood. But this guy right here, um, he's my hero, and I want to have his baby. He's that good. Um, he's got all kinds of video and he's got this uh, DVD series that you can buy for like 30, 40 bucks from um, Eastwood. It's really good. He'll lead you through all the basics and everything and do it right. So what I'm going to do is show you how to remove the paint first so we can really get a good idea of what we're looking at. It. And I'm fairly certain that what I'm going to find, well you can see, I've got some really nasty rust going completely through here. All right. First thing we gotta do is an examination. You're gonna feel a little stinging sensation at first. I'm gonna need you to cough a few times. 
Um, what I'm going to do is initially knock the paint off with uh, this aircraft remover. Tired of those pesky aircraft? You've tried washing them out, scrubbing them out. This will remove unwanted aircraft. What I do is put some of that on there and it takes the first layer off and um, not so much to remove it but what it does is it makes it come off in chunks when you go to spin this on there as opposed to atomized dust so it greatly reduces the dust in the air so let me slobber some of that on there all right pretty nasty stuff here so you're going to want to wear some uh, prophylactic gloves here but anyway nothing to this stuff you just slobber it on slobber slobber slobber